I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell. They banish us, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public, like a frog. To tell your name the live-long day To an admiring bog. Might I but more tonight in thee? There is another sky, ever serene and fair, and there is another sunshine though it be darkness there. Never mind faded forests, Austin. Never mind silent fields. Here is a little forest whose leaf is evergreen. Here is a brighter garden where not a frost has been. In its unfading flowers I hear the bright bee hum. Prithee, my brother, into my garden come. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet Never in extremity, it asked a crumb of me. I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading, till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service like a drum kept beating, beating, till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul with those same boots of lead again. Then space began to toll as all the heavens were a bell and being but an ear and I and silence some strange race wrecked solitary here. And then a plank in reason broke and I dropped down and down and hit a world at every plunge and finished knowing then. A light exists in spring, not present on the year, at any other period, when March is scarcely here. A color stands abroad on solitary fields that science cannot overtake, but human nature feels. It waits upon the lawn. It shows the furthest tree upon the furthest slope you know. It almost speaks to you. Then as horizons step or noons report away, 
Without the formula of sound, it passes and we stay. A quality of loss affecting our content, as trade had suddenly encroached upon a sacrament. Like trains of cars on tracks of plush, I hear the level B. A jar across the flowers goes, their velvet masonry. With stands until the sweet assault, their chivalry consumes, while he, victorious, tilts away to vanquish other blooms. His feet are shod with gauze, his helmet is of gold, his breast a silver onyx with chrysoprase inlaid. His labor is a chant, his idleness a tune. Oh, for a bee's experience of clovers and of noon. I heard a fly buzz when I died. The stillness round my form was like the stillness in the air between the heaves of storm. The eyes beside had wrung them dry, and breaths were gathering sure for that last onset when the king be witnessed in his power. I willed my keepsakes, signed away what portion of me I could make assignable, and then there interposed a fly with blue, uncertain, stumbling buzz between the light and me. And then the windows failed, and then I could not see to see. The Grass by Emily Dickinson the grass so little has to do. A sphere of simple green with only butterflies to brood and bees to entertain. And stir all day to pretty tunes the breezes fetch along and hold the sunshine in its lap and bow to everything. And thread the dews all night like pearls and make itself so fine. A duchess were too common for such a noticing. And even when it dies, to pass in odor so divine, as lowly spices gone to sleep, or amulets of pine. And then to dwell in sovereign barns, and dream the days away. The grass so little has to do. I wish I were the hay. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves, and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste. And I had put away my labor and my leisure, too, for his civility. We passed the school where children strove at recess, in the ring. We passed the fields of gazing grain. We passed the setting sun. Or rather, he passed us. The dews drew quivering and chill, for only gossamer my gown, my tippet only tulle. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice in the ground. Since then, tis centuries, and yet feels shorter than the day I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity.' 